With Odoo's expense module, you can track all of your employee expenses in one application, and all of those expenses will flow directly into our accounting application. Now, inside of accounting, under our vendors, we'll see our employee expenses. I currently do not have any, but we'll look at how we can create them in just a second. Just like our OCR video, we can scan in expenses. So we can scan our receipts or upload all of the pictures of our receipts and process them using the OCR or just use them as a reference point. So now let's go into our expense application and I'm going to create a new expense. Now right here we see that we can try one for free. Um, so I'm just going to try a sample receipt and we'll just click any of these. And what that's going to do is create a new expense. We see the amount gets automatically populated and that's if we were using the OCR. We see the amount that we're expensing here, which is the total for 1702. And we see the total here. Now, if there was taxes, we can apply a tax if we have the taxes set up in our system. We don't have the tax that is applied, or we can, so 15%, uh, which is on our subtotal here. So we're including taxes. And we see the employee is me, because I have it defaulted, the person that's creating the receipt. And we can then know if this was paid by the employee, so we need to reimburse the employee or if it was paid by the company, and then we can select um, which journal we're going to expense that through. Because I'm an admin, I have additional settings like the account I'm looking at. Um, if you were just a user, not admin, um, you won't see some of these settings here, so just keep that in mind. And before I do anything else, I wanna go back to my expenses here. And I wanna mention that the typical workflow here would be um, let's say you're going on a business trip and you have a lot of receipts. Um, the easiest way to, to accomplish this is to take pictures of your receipt, either upload them as you go or just have a folder with all of your receipts. And via the mobile view, you can upload all of your receipts at once. Each of them will create an, a new expense. And then what happens is that you'll select all of those expenses for one single trip and create an expense report that gets sent to a manager for approval. Uh, as well as a second approver if needed. Those approvers come from the employee's profile. So inside of employees, if I click on my employee here and I go to uh, work information and we go see approvers, we see we can set an expense approver, which can be a user. Here I only have one user in my database, so I'm going to leave that blank for now, but just keep that in mind. And back in expenses, I can create another expense here. So I'll just create a random expense and I'll say this was lunch. We'll give this a category of meals and let's just set in an amount and we won't set any taxes. So one thing to mention as well is that each one of these products that we're selecting, they're just products in our system and they can have default expense accounts. So here for meals, if I click on that category, we can see we can set the accounting settings as well as any taxes that might be applicable for the general uh, usage of this product. Now I'm gonna change this account to uh, meals, which is an expense account that I've created in my system. There are some other options down below for re-invoicing. So you can actually re-invoice a customer for an expense. And the way this would work is essentially, if I say I'm going to re-invoice um, a specific customer, it's going to add this line item to the customer's profile, or rather to the customer's sale order with either a markup or at cost. So if I had a sale price on this, maybe this was meals, and I said this was a $100 sale price, and I'm going to re-invoice this, I can select the customer to re-invoice. And here, if I say sale order number eight, and I'll save this. Let me update my expense account. So um, I can either do that by switching this and we can go back to meals and we'll see that defaults to our new expense account that we set. I'm gonna set the customer to re-invoice. This was paid, let's say by the company here and we'll save that. So I have two expenses here. Uh, this was paid by the employee and this one was paid by the company. If they're split in terms of who paid for it, then we're gonna to have to create separate reports. But if they were paid by the same, either company or employee, then we can select all and create one report from them. So let's do one more example. And we'll just say dinner. And let's say this was meals. And we'll give this a total of 450. 
and we'll say this is paid by the employee to reimburse, we won't re-invoice any customer for this. So now we have two expenses here. We can select both of these, dinner and this sample receipt one, and create a report. That's going to pull in all of our expenses in one report. I'll just set myself as a manager. Again, I'm an admin. I can pretty much do whatever I want here. Um, we have the expense dates at the top, but we can make a summary here. We can say on-site trip to customer X and save this. Each one of these lines can have a receipt attached. So we see this one line has a receipt attached and that's what's displaying on the right. We'll be able to navigate through them. One of these has taxes. Eventually, we're gonna to wanna to submit this to a manager and at the top of our screen here, we have all of the expenses that are related to this expense report. So the manager will receive a notification to approve this. You see, I got a notification myself down below and it'll also be in my activities at the top of my screen as one expense report and I can click on that and it'll show me the expense reports that I need to approve. As a manager, I'm gonna go into expenses. I can go to expense report, see all of my statuses to the left, all the different employees that I'm responsible for to the left as well, and click into any of these and approve them. Now, once they're approved, we need to post these journal entries. Here I have my default journal selected, which is vendor bills. You can have a separate journal for expenses if you'd like. And we can configure the default journals by going to our configurations and settings. And under accounting, we see our employee expense journal, and then we see our payment methods. And these payment methods are only relevant when we're paying uh, via the company. So maybe we have a company credit card or a bank account that we wanna select. And we can limit those options here or leave it blank to allow any of our options to be selected. Now back at my expenses, I'm going to also submit this one that's paid by the company. So I can create a report here. I'll say lunch with customer. And I'm just going to select myself as a manager and submit this. Once they review it, they can approve. And one thing to know is that this one was paid by the company. We need to select the payment method. So as an admin, I might do that. Or as a um, employee, I may say I'm using a company credit card that applies to me. So let's just say that we're going to leave it at our bank, our normal bank journal. At the top of our screen, because we're re-invoicing our customer for this product, we'll see the customers to re-invoice and the sale order attached at the top of our screen. And this has one expense associated with it. Once I approve this, let's go into uh, post these journal entries. Let's give this an accounting date. We'll just say this is gonna be the third. And now on my sale order, we see the product has been added. It's been added to this sale order at $100 because that was what the price we have set on the product itself. So regardless of the cost, we say that we're gonna re-invoice them for $100. Now, if we said at cost, then the $300 would have came over and went onto that sale order which is pretty nifty if you need to re-invoice any expenses that were incurred, especially for project-based billing. Maybe you have some expenses that uh, you need to purchase supplies and you create expense report for that, and that gets re-invoiced automatically to our customer. Now, as a result of posting all of this, we see our journal entry at the top of our screen for the pavement, because we already made payment for this expense. And we can look at the journal entry itself, which is going, uh, debiting our food and meals account and crediting our outstanding payments so we can reconcile against this $300 line in our reconciliation process. You'll notice throughout we always have our smart buttons linking us back to important information so if we were to just go into accounting and look at this payment we'll see the expense report and the pay or rather if we look at this journal entry we'll see the expense report that it's tied to which will bring us right back to expenses. So now I have a long list of breadcrumbs that I can crawl my way back through, or I can just go back and look at it in accounting. If I go to vendors and I go to employee expenses, we'll see our two expense reports. One is completely done and paid. That was paid by the customer, or rather by the company. And then we have this onsite trip that was paid by the employee that we need to reimburse them for. So again, we can view that here or we can view it in expenses, just depends on your role at the company and where you need to view that information. In the employee's point of view, they can see what they've submitted, what's under validation, and what's to be reimbursed. And the managers can see everything that they need to see as well. 
Now for this onsite trip, this was paid by the employee and we need to create a bill to pay our uh, vendor or rather our employee. So here we can actually re-invoice them or rather pay the bill for our employees via payroll if your localization supports it. Here we're not using payroll so we're just going to create a generic vendor bill that's going to go to our uh, Kevin Zaki here so that our company can pay Kevin Zaki back. So once we decide to post these journal entries, Okay, so we have a sample expense here and the system doesn't want us to mix them together. Uh, let's see, so let me go ahead and just remove this one and I will post these journal entries. Now that's going to create an expense inside of accounting and our AP team can take over and they're gonna see in our vendor bills, we're going to have to pay Kevin Zaki for the onsite trip. So here if we were doing nacha payments or um, writing them a check, we we'll simply can click on register payment here, select our journal, our payment method, whether it's manual, checks, via NACHA, whatever the case might be, I'll leave it manual here and create our payment to pay back Kevin Zaki. And we'll see our journal items, as you expect, we are debiting our food and meals account and crediting our accounts payable account. And that payment was created so that we can reconcile against that inside of our bank journal. So as a summary, inside of expenses, our employees can upload all of their expenses. If they need to, they can split expenses up. Um, we didn't go over that, but simply if you have an expense, for example, this one, if I need to ex split this expense, maybe between two different employees, I can do that. Um, after that, we're going to submit them in batches as an expense report. That expense report is going to be sent to a manager for approval. They can be paid by the employee or by the company. And if they're paid by the employee, then we need to reimburse the employee. If they're paid by the company, then we just need to register that payment so we can reconcile against that. And if we need to re-invoice the customer in either scenario, we can certainly do that by selecting the sale order and that will automatically post the expense to that sale order once the journal entry is posted. And finally, if we need to adjust any of our accounting information, we can do so from our expense categories. So our individual products that have applicable expense accounts, re-invoicing information. And then if we wanna set our journals, we can do that from accounting. We can, under the account settings, we can say employee expense journals, and apply different payment methods. And then uh, just keep in mind, we can import these via an email alias to create any of these expenses. So you can email them right in. Um, each employee can email these and create those expenses in the system. And we can also use the OCR technology to uh, convert those receipts into actionable records.